and welcome to my channel. I'm really excited because I've read some great books lately and I can't wait to tell you all about them. First I read Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. This is my first Lee Bardugo book. In Six of Crows, six hardened criminals are hired to break the scientist out of a really heavily guarded prison. It's full of high adventure, excellent writing, and a wonderfully fast-paced plot. Fast-paced plot, that's really hard to say. I gave it a five out of five and it was utterly amazing. Look at the cover, look at those wet pages. Next I read The Magicians by Lev Grossman. The Magicians is kind of like Harry Potter mixed with Narnia, only the characters are much, much older. If you've seen the sci-fi channel show that this is based off of, I found the first couple episodes to be really true to the story. It tells the story of Quentin who has emotional issues and then one day he gets accepted into this university and he studies magic there. It's really, really neat. I found Quentin as a character to be really, really difficult to get through. Um, this is my second time reading it, and I enjoyed it way more this time because I understand Quentin's character more than I did the first time because he was so utterly annoying the first time. If you like complicated magic systems and slow burn of plot, then you'll really, really like The Magicians. I gave it a four out of five this time around, which is better than the two and a half out of five. I gave it the first time. Let's talk about another reread, shall we? I continued my Game of Thrones reread by reading Clash of Kings by, of course, George R.R. R. Martin. It's hard to say a whole lot about this book without ruining the first book, but I will say that some of my favorite characters really start to shine through in this book, Arya, especially Catelyn Tully. And on my reread of this, quite like my reread of The Magicians, I'm realizing that characters I didn't originally like, I'm growing to, like Danneries. Throughout my entire reading of all of the books before, I disliked her chapters and I gotta say I might have skipped a couple in Dance of Dragons because I, I didn't think they paced well and I just really wasn't as interested in her story because it's so disconnected from the centralized story happening on Westeros. She's the type of character that I really think that it takes a reread to fully grasp the complexity of all that she's gone through. So this time around I gave it 5 out of 5 but the first time around I also gave it 5 out of 5. I loved it then and I still love it. If you guys have been wanting to read these books and have been intimidated by their size just know that it is such a an excellent investment in your time because it is so entertaining. Next I read Hollow City by Ransom Rich, which is the second book in the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children trilogy. I started reading the first one like three years ago and it kept putting it down because it just didn't really draw my attention that much. And then I picked up the audiobook for it and flew through it. And I got the audiobook of this one and it was the same thing. I ended up listening to the audiobook in two days, three days maybe, not very long. And this plot is a whole lot faster moving. Parts of it take place during World War II and the air raids and bombings in London, and that was my favorite part. I also really loved meeting new peculiars. That's one of my favorite things in these books, to see all the interesting things that these children can do. I ended up giving it a four out of five. Next I read The Evolution of Mara Dyer, the second book in the Mara Dyer trilogy. Lots of second books this month. In the first book, Mara Dyer has just suffered a really tragic event, and because of it has PTSD, and she moves with her family to Florida and creepy things start happening and it's kind of like her journey to figure out what is going on if she really is crazy which was my favorite 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 part about the first book because you never really know she's such an unreliable narrator at times I also didn't really care for her relationship with Noah in this one it's just so d emotionally draining for me to read this because I'm like you're better than him and he is trying to control you and I don't like it <laughs> I ended up giving this book a three out of five I will continue with the series even though I hear that the last one's a pretty big letdown. After reading Hollow City, I had to wait three whole days for Library of Souls to get here, and I'm glad it did because. <laughs> and this one, we found out a whole lot more about Mrs. Peregrine's family, and I thought that their story was really cool. A great thing about this series is, in audiobooking it, I'm not able, of course, to see the pictures while I'm listening to it while I'm driving, but it's still so well written that you don't need the supplementary pictures to help. Of course, I can't say anything more without spoiling it, but if you would have told me two years ago that I would have enjoyed this series this much, I would have laughed in your face because it was such a surprise for me. I gave the conclusion a five out of five. Next, I read volume four and volume five of Freak Angels. Freak Angels is a series of graphic novels that take place in a future dystopian London that has been flooded by some sort of natural disaster. And the Freak Angels are kind of like this gang that are trying to keep Whitechapel safe. The Freak Angels also have a deep dark secret that surrounds them in mystery and a little bit of magic. The, the best part about these graphic novels by far is the story. I mean, the art's amazing. It's a little 
it's a little simple, but it's really clean and I enjoy that. But the story is so strong and the characters are so individual and neat, do I want to say neat, that I'm beginning to like this series more than Saga and you guys know how much I love Saga and how much all of the world loves Saga because Saga is amazing and you should still definitely read Saga, but also read Freak Angels. It's so good and it's a completed series. There are six of them. I'm on the sixth one right now. It's awesome. So you don't have that lingering emptiness that a continuing series sometimes makes you feel. I gave them both a five out of five. Next I read Critical Failures Volume 1 by Robert Brevin. This story tells the book of this group of young men who are playing this D&D-esque game and they have recently hired a new guild master or cabin master. I don't know what, I can't remember what it's called in this book. And they start to make fun of them and as payback he uses magic dice because that's a thing to transport them into the real life game that they're playing. As someone who regularly plays d and I found that kind of scary because no matter how equipped I think I am in my kick-ass personality, I have slowly come to realize that I would not be able to survive a day in these fictionalized worlds. And I'm pretty sure it's independently published or self-published, I'm not sure. But it was awesome and you should get it. And I gave it a five out of five. It was so entertaining. Lastly, I read The Glittering Court by Rochelle Mead. I have a lot of thoughts on The Glittering Court and I'm not sure how to articulate them well because while I enjoyed the bones of this story, I thought that the flesh around it was so poorly executed that it made the entire story frustrating. The basic premise is this young affluent woman decides to give up a life of affluence <laughs> to join The Glittering Court which is kind of like a finishing school for girls with impoverished backgrounds to train them up so they can find wealthy to do husbands in the new world, which is of course a colonial America-like situation. My problem with the story is not that she gives up this life of affluence so that she will have her own choice in her marriage. It is that Avalyn could have been such an interesting feminist character. This is just my personal opinion. So if you loved this book and you thought that she was an amazing character without flaw, then that's that's fine, whatevs. But I felt like she could have been impactful if she would have made her choices for a different reason because they're always subliminally about like a man or following the patriarchal society of the time. I feel like I'm gonna go off on a tangent. I, the story was not bad and I just wanna reiterate that. Sure, and for that reason, I ended up giving The Glittering Court a very reluctant three out of five. Okay guys, that's it for me today. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. I do new videos every Thursday. Hope to see you then. Thanks. Like a, like a, like a bullet train.